He asked me to find a pregnant woman who would help to carry the calabash. But I could not find anybody to do so. This therefore forfeited my plans and I decided to go to Ilorin, the capital of the present Kwara state. I went to an old man, better known as Anjanu Inuigo, Baba Omokomo, meaning the spirit of the bottle, the father of the bastards. When I got to him, this man made a long and boastful speech about his ability with shams and herbs. He asked me to make a sacrifice with seven half kobo coins and uh, one black hen before he could do anything at all. I thought within myself that the former man asked for a white cock, but this man has now asked me for a black hen. Which of these two men should I believe would be, would be better or telling me the truth? I felt deeply inside of me that I was being deceived. But since I wanted money by all means, I could not do anything to resist that temptation. In all my journeys and searchings, I knew nothing about God or his Jesus or his salvation. In short, the malam, that's the Muslim priest, drained my pocket to the extent that I had to trek from Ilorin to Ogbomosho, a distance of about 37 miles, with the strength of my sham. I left Ilorin at about 4.30 a.m. in the morning, and I reached Ogbomosho at about 2.30 in the afternoon. I went straight away to a friend there at Ogbomosho, but on that fateful day, I did not meet him at home, and I felt so sorry for myself. By this time in question, I was hungry, but I had not a single penny left on me. I decided to go to a local food seller to eat, thinking and assuring myself that after I had eaten, I would disappear by means of my charms. So I went there and I ate. However, when I tried to disappear with my shams, my shams failed me. I thank God for Jesus Christ, who has never failed me, and he will never fail me. Well, I got up from my seat, from the restaurant. I went out and tried to run away, but the food seller raised alarm, and she shouted, Thief! Thief! She gripped me, and the people around helped her in beating me up mercilessly. They beat me up mercilessly. I always complain. They beat me even more than the food I ate. Dear listeners, you can see how I helped Satan to bring me so low. Because I wanted to get rich. Many of the early class or, or, or witch doctors will never tell you the evil behind getting money by force. Even those who use, in the Western world, who, who use uh, gangs and mafias to kill people for money, they never tell you that they, I mean, Satan will never tell them that he was going to hang them behind the bars. Satan will only tell them, eliminate him so that you can get rich. Until when you go into it to see it for yourself, or perhaps until you see yourself burning in the fires of hell. What profit is it for you for a money you have that you do not have a rest of mind anytime you remember the source of where your money comes from? Well, my struggle to get rich by any means did not end there. Despite these sufferings which I had undergone, I continued to search for other ways. The Bible says, There is a way that seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. And this is in Proverbs the 16th chapter and verse 25. I have chosen a way that seemed right to me and was determined to follow it until I achieved my goal of getting rich quickly. I went to Ikare in Akoko division of the present Ondo state to a man who knew about money making and who claimed he could help me. This terrible man, the nature of his job prohibits him from seeing the light of the sun. Any day he will come out, he must rain. It must rain, so that the ray of the sun uh, will be covered up. For the man said that the rays of the sun must never dry his clothes. So his abode was made in an underground tunnel. 
The house built for him on the ground was fully air-conditioned, even though this man was totally an illiterate. We were six in number who went to consult this man on the same issue. He asked us, what type of money do you wish to have? He then began to show us the different methods by which men get rich quickly in the dark world. Satan knows many ways of keeping a man in bondage by enticing them. Some of us said, any type will do. He brought out something, and I asked each of, uh, 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 he asked each of us to, to swallow those things that uh, he brought out. I told him, excuse me, sir, you must explain this to me fully before I can do such a thing. He put away the thing he had earlier offered and continued to show us another different system. He took a hen and tied one of its legs to a stick with a short rope with very powerful incantations and enchantments. He prepared a big fire directly opposite the hen, a few distance away. He then came back and put some uh, grains of corn in between the burning fire and the hen tied down. With a sharp knife in his hand, he cut the rope with which he had tied the hen. The hen, thus released, ran forward to the maze, swallowed about six grains quickly, and dashed into the burning fire, and was consumed immediately. The message is very simple, and it is this. The man explained to us, anyone who gets rich by this method will be rich and very famous for as many years as the number of grains of corn that the hen had swallowed. The person will also end up in a similar fashion as did the hen, that is, in hellfire. One of us commented in Yoruba language, saying, That means, if the imam enters into hell, it will not be in the presence of the Arabic pupils under him. This means to him it will be nobody's concern if he ended up in the fires of hell, at least on earth, he would have got what he wanted. I advised him against making this choice, but he refused bluntly. So he went on and chose that method of money making, leaving five of us uh, to our fate to make our choice. I shook my head that I cannot take that method. It was not my choice. The other four agreed with me, and we asked the man to show us other options. He then took us to the backyard of his house. He dug a hole in the ground and put into it one of the things he had earlier uh, asked us to swallow. He covered it up with soil. After some time, he unearthed it again. We saw many little beds, like chickens, but among them was a large one. The large one was on its side. It put one wing on the ground instead of his legs and supported itself on it. Then raising itself up on this wing, it spread the second other wing into the mid-air. What is this? I asked the old man. And he said, This is Lukudi, the thing people swallow to get money. He explained to, uh, he explained to us more. The wing raised up into the air represents the soul of the man. When the time apportioned for the man who has swallowed Lukudi is ended, the board inside of him will bring down this wing raised up. Then the man will die suddenly. But while the wing was raised inside the man, he will be rich and famous, and his stomach will be a little bit bigger than, than normal. His wealth will be the talk of everybody in the community for the period the charm was in effect. Actually, I did not like the very mention of death concerning that type of money making. What I wanted was not just to have money alone, but also to remain immortal as well. Again, I told the, the old man, I don't want that one. Show me another one. My colleagues consented to my decision. At this point, the man remarked, the other methods involved the shedding of blood. Then I was shocked to hear that. Meanwhile, another person came in and joined us, making our number six again. He now took us to another section of the back of, the, uh, of his house. 
There he had some giant pots which were arranged in a single row with only one long plank on the top as a cover, as a, as a lid for them all. It would take at least two hefty men to lift the lid if they could. The man told us to line up in a row, each of us standing beside each pot. He gave each person a giant knife made especially for him by the local blacksmith. He ordered us to close our eyes tightly. He also instructed us that as soon as the lid was opened, uh, that it was removed from the pots, each one with his eyes still closed should cut the pot before him. We nodded in agreement. He then started to make some rigorous incantations and enchantments. After some time, he ordered the lid to be removed. It was removed. We heard that the lid was removed. Without any hesitation, all the other five colleagues cut the pots sharply, breaking them. Personally, I was curious, so I refused to close my eyes. Instead of cutting the pot before me, I held the, the big knife behind me and peeped inside the pot. There inside the pot, I was able to see my mother sitting on a stool in a kitchen, who at that time was at Ibadan, a distance of about 300 kilometers away. I was very annoyed at the man's trap to get me kill my innocent mother. So I dropped his uh, knife and told the man he had no choice for me. The man, on seeing what I had done, was extremely furious. He charged at me and rebuked me very harshly, saying I was being strong-headed and calling me names, so many names, at the same time cursing. I also replied to him in a hard tone. I snarled and I told him, by my family upbringing, I never did anything which I didn't fully understand. How could I consent when you ordered me to cut my innocent mother and kill her? This man tried some powerful incantations on me to harm me, but to no avail, he never did succeed. When he threatened me further, I made him realize that he was playing with a viper. If he thought I was a novice to him simply considering my young age, seeing he could not do me any harm, he warned me sternly never to come to him for anything again. I shouted back at him, I was very upset, and I left. However, my other colleagues who closed their eyes and cut the pots at the man's order had something to regret for the rest of their lives, for they ignorantly killed either their parents wives, children, and our, our relatives. Looking back at these instances and many more not recounted here, I begin to reflect on the methods by which many people get their money. If you are anxious to be wealthy at all costs, remember that the source of such wealth is full of corruption. Many people fear the death. Many fear a curse. But people do not fear the God of heaven. Neither do they fear the Lord Jesus Christ. Satan in his devices knows how to offer money and fame at the cost of human souls. And he gives it to people at the expense of their soul and for their ultimate destruction. However, God offers life and truth. However, God offers life and truth. If you have chosen to get rich by any foul means, consider what the word of God says. But they that will be rich fall into temptation and a snare and into many foolish and hurtful lusts which drown men in destruction and perdition. For the love of money is the root of all evil which some while coveted after, they have erred from the faith and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. Remember we read it a minute ago in First Timothy, the sixth chapter, verse 9 and verse 10. Now to the rich people who hope and trust only in their riches and not in the knowledge of Jesus Christ as the Savior, the Bible again says, 
Go to now, that is, come now, ye rich men, that doesn't use your wealth to the glory of God. You rich people that worship your money. You rich people that took your money as your God. The Bible says you should begin to weep, even from this world onward.